people continue to recover after being stabbed on the Apple River over the weekend. That's right, a 52-year-old man from Prior Lake is in custody tonight. I'm sure that anybody that witnessed this uh, will never forget. Whoa! 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 I thought that was it for me. And I, I truly, truly feared for my life. And then I, I took it from his hand and then I, I went in swing like this. Did you hit him? Did the knife make contact with him? That I don't remember. What the fuck? What the fuck? He's dying! He's How bad is it? Well, can we get through this war? <laughs> Do you have a scar? Yeah, quite a, quite a big one. They yelled and they screamed in order to attract a crowd. My intestines were in my hands. This is the Apple River. Located in the heart of northwestern Wisconsin's Shady Street, Croy County, the 77.5-mile-long tributary has been a hotspot for tubers throughout the region for decades. But on July 30th, 2022, became the scene of a terrible tragedy, one that would take the life of a young man well before his time and reignite the age-old debate between self-defense and stone-cold murder. At 3.44 p.m., as a group of young people are tubing, they spot 52-year-old engineer Nicolay Miu using snorkel gear to allegedly search for a member of his party's cell phone. But when the teens accuse Miu of being a pedophile, he reacts with a blind rage that only pours fuel on the rapidly rampaging flames. A careful analysis of cell phone video captured by Jawan Cockfield shows the unfolding scene second by terrifying second. What is he on? Whoa! 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 <laughs> what? As Mew lunges at his teen tormentors, he drops his snorkel in the water and loses it, earning even more of their mockery. He's on camera. Guys, let's go. <laughs> on camera. <laughs> Yo, the new iPhone got that good quality. What do you say? Mew briefly begins to walk away from the confrontation, but makes his fateful decision to turn and engage the teens even further. Witnesses encourage him to leave. Sound advice he unwisely ignores. Who the hell is this? With the situation intensifying, we soon reach the point of no return, as Mew allegedly strikes a female and appears to fall or be pushed by the teens, and then struck in the side of the head. He emerges from the water, this time armed with a three-inch silver blade he has clipped in his waistband. As Mew rises, A.J. Martin lunges toward him, unaware that Mew is now armed with a knife. He's disassembled in a split second, and a young girl's torso viciously slashed. At some point off-screen, 17-year-old Isaac Stuman is also disassembled by Mew's knife. <laughs> Oh my God. 
As Mew flees upriver and back to his wife and friends, the terrified teens begin to question the reality of the moment. But what the current brings their way is a stark and terrifying reminder that this is all too real. Is this real? That's not dark! By 3.47, just three minutes after the start of the encounter, Panic 911 calls were flooding in. Somebody needs to talk to me. Yeah, but calm down. Stop it, calm down. Somebody's got to talk to me. We're at Rivers Day. Was, was somebody stabbed? Is that what you're calling about? I don't know what happened. Somebody pulled a knife. Okay, so we're on the river. Do you do you know where the man with the knife is? Do you know where the man with the knife is? With my knife. Okay. okay. Everybody calm down. We're fine. We're fine. Can somebody tell me where the man with the knife is, please? As officers approach, they find a scene of total horror. Hey, Yeah. Okay. Have them hold it. Hold right. it. AK, you hold my hand. Squeeze my hand, man. Squeeze my hand. You're doing so good, AK. You're doing so good. So good. You're right here. You're right here. We're right here. We're right here. We're also looking for the suspect. I'll work on a description. I heard one person say scuba gear. You're doing so good, AK. AK Martin, huh? What a good name, right? 4502 dispatch. We're doing CPR and one. Did you guys see what happened? Who did it? With the suspect still not apprehended, officers rely on witnesses for help for a description. Did you guys see what happened? Who did it? Do you know who it is? No, no, it's just some rando on the river. He looked ball. Five, five, nine, five, ten Russian looking guy. He went somewhere over there. Where's he wearing? Hey, you see him? Hey! I think they just went after him. I think he's up there. You get out of there. Get out! Get out! The search begins for Mui, and three hours pass before he's spotted by witnesses at a park downriver, where police converge and detain him. I'm sorry, yeah? No, I'm just being detained at this point, okay? Yes. What are we checking? Yep. 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 dispatch, believe we have the suspect detained. I believe we have him detained at the same No. No weapons or anything like that? No. Has a possible suspect detained okay. at 1649. Like I said, you're just being detained at this point, okay, boss? Okay. As officers examine Moose features and clothing, they realize they have a perfect match for their suspect. Yeah, the chain matches. Yep, camo. Shorts. What's your name? Nick. Nick what? Nick Mew. Okay. He's got a silver it's, chain It matches. On Silver blockchain. Same shorts. He's got some pretty good markings on his hand, too. Nicolet Mew is taken into custody as his victims are left fighting for their lives. Four um, were transported out, two by ambulance, two by air, to regions. Uh, one was transported to Lakeview where they were pronounced deceased. Uh, I believe the deceased individual is a 17 year old male. But before his claims of self defense can reach a courtroom, he faces a grueling interrogation. I don't know, I don't have a lawyer over here, George. I grabbed the knife from him, and what I did then, I grabbed the twist of his I was fearing for my life. You know, I'm as a law-abiding citizen as they come. Four people went to the hospital, and uh, one person died. Oh, no. Was that because they fought each other, or? No, my whole life is down the tubes. Hi there, are you Nick? Yeah. Hi Nick, my name is Brandy. Hi. I'm a lieutenant with the St. Clair County Sheriff's Office, okay? Um, you got some water, right? Great, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have you had anything to eat? No. Okay, let me, uh... Can I will wait for now. Okay. Food. Are you sure? I'm not happy. Okay. Well, if you get hungry, yeah. just uh, let these guys know, okay? Or let me know when I can. Uh, I'm just very thirsty. Yeah, I bet. Uh, Plus there's a lot of... We were drinking beer all day and not drinking any water. And it's hot and, yeah, being in the sun all day. doesn't matter if you're drinking beer. Sometimes you just go and then this, yeah. So I would imagine you have some questions for me. Well. Um, I am just going to go through the rights form. 
and you know, let you know if you want to answer any of my questions. We'll talk about that. Um, I'm going to record our conversation, sure. if you're okay with that. Of course. Um, let's see, today is the 30th of July, and it is 7.53. PM. The interview starts off casual, with the investigator attempting to put Miu at ease by offering him food and water, and asking basic questions about his work and marriage. What was the last grade that you completed? I have a uh, bachelor's, and I have actually two degrees, one okay. in engineering, one in mathematics. Wow. And I'm a class away from a master's in both. I'm not a dummy, and I've never run, never had a uh, run uh, for the law, except when I got the uh, We'll, we'll go into okay. that. For many years, I worked as a contractor, a contracting engineer. And then for the past 16 years, I've been working with uh, Richie Engineering, where I met Sandy. Okay. What, uh, what does Richie Engineering do? Like, what do they yes. manufacture? Uh, what do we do? We do uh, HVAC service equipment. Okay. Basically, we're the, the top tier of HVAC. We're like the top brand. Uh, and top brand for that is Yellow Jacket. Okay. Really? Uh, well, I have bigger dreams now, yeah. shattered, but anyway, I don't want to talk about them right now. Okay. I don't know exactly what happened, I just don't, I, I, I can't talk about it, I need to go one step at a time. Yep. And if you have any questions along the way, Nick, yes. just stop and ask me, okay? Or if you need to take a break, just... How bad is it? Well, can we get through this form and <laughs> ask each other yes. questions? Yes. I just, I don't want to... I want to maintain the integrity of yeah. this All investigation right. and your rights and, you know, so I want to get through this form and then we can ask questions, okay? So I'm going to turn this around. Um, I'll give you this pen. What I'll have you do is I'm going to read each. Uh, you, you seem to speak excellent English. Yeah. You can read. Yeah, I would Miranda, imagine. Miranda writes, yeah. Yeah, which have not been read to me when I was put in the car. Is that and, right? and that's okay. As long as they weren't asking you any questions, they don't need to. Oh. But I'd like to ask these questions, so that's why we're going to go through this right now, right. okay? After being read as Miranda writes, the investigator asks Mui to construct a timeline of his day. This allows investigators to identify gaps and inconsistencies in any future testimony and helps to corroborate other possible evidence. But instead, he immediately becomes defensive of his actions. So, I would like to ask you questions about your day today, what happened, uh, you know, like how you, how you guys got to be on the Apple River today, and then like what your day was like. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to you if you're willing to answer questions. If you decide that, yep, I'll answer questions right now, and in 10 minutes, you don't want to answer anymore, you just need to tell me that, okay? And if you don't want to answer questions right now, then that's fine too, and I will leave. It, it's up to you. All I can say, it was a, uh, it was self-defense. Self-defense, there were lots of people on, on it that came on to me. Self-defense, and they produced two weapons, one I took from them. Okay. That's the only thing I can tell. And they were, they hit me, and they were on top of me, and that's, I don't remember anything after that. I just remember I ran away. I ran away to my, to my uh, group. There were actually people coming over from my group to see what was going on. I said, nothing, 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 just get back on. And, and, and they kept asking, and I said, nothing, nothing. I didn't explain to them anything, because I, I, was, I was so fearful. I didn't know what these people would be doing to us. I've never been in a situation like this, where people produce weapons, on, and they were saying, they were uh, calling, um, don't, I, I don't remember, but they said, don't run, over, don't, don't run from us, don't do this, uh, you're a child molester, you're this, and again, said, are you people drunk? Well, you're a child molester. I said, the only thing I remember is, in my mind is, if I'm a child molester, should you be drinking? Should you be drinking alcohol and, and doing what you're doing to people that you don't even know, attacking them? And I said, if, if I'm a child molester, you should be having alcohol, you know? And, and they took my, uh, I was snorkeling, so they took my snorkel away, they threw it in the water, they grabbed my pants, one wanted to pull my pants down, and I grabbed onto him, and I don't know who that kid was, but he produced, he had a knife on, on him. And then there was another uh, knife, a longer knife, uh, looked like a 
Get your knife. Only one knife was ever retrieved from the scene and was found by police discarded along the riverbank. It belonged to Nicola Mew. At some point, you can see him pull it out and really subtly stab the five people who ended up in close proximity to him. And as the video shot by Joanne Cockfield clearly shows, Aju Martin was unarmed. I just know that I, I, when, when, when the kid attacked me, I took that from him. The kitchen knife or the other no, knife? No, the, small, the smaller knife. Okay, what did that knife look like? Do you remember? I don't even remember. But yeah. it was smaller? Smaller, yes. Okay. So, that's all. How did you get to be by them? Or who are so, these people? So, uh, Ariel lost his phone. Okay. The phone was in the floor. One of those bags? That yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he, everyone had one, but his phone was in the floor, so he says, well, let's go look for it. So I put, put my smartphone on, and I looked, and this guy found something. At least parts of Mew's story about a member of his party losing his cell phone is backed up by friend Ernesto Torres Chagas, who saw the encounter from a distance. The guy you take it? Yeah. He's looking by the phone in the river because we stand here in the corner by the group of the people. All right. And uh, I saw him there looking for, for, for the phone, and he said, yeah. he's in trouble. What do you mean trouble? Did I saw people attack him. People stay in their homes. You know, a bunch of people attack him, and then I don't know what's going on. Mew alleges the group was in possession of the phone, but multiple other statements he makes simply don't line up to the video footage. So I put, put my smartphone on, and I looked, and this guy found something. And they were talking about it. And I said, okay. This group of people? This group of oh, people, gotcha. yeah. I went over, and I said, did you guys find the phone? And if you did, can I see it? Can I identify it? And they started calling me names. They got off of their tubes. They came at me. And I, I said, all I need. And they were calling me all kinds of names, insulting me for being in the water with a, with a snorkel. And I said, all I want, guys, did you find the phone? And I saw they had, a, they had found something, okay. all right? And I don't know if there was a phone or something else they found, but they wouldn't talk to me about what they found. And we were looking desperately to find this phone. And I know somebody found it, but I thought it was that group. Okay. You know, and then they went over, they, they came to me and they, they grabbed my snorkel and they threw it in the water. Well, the water was so fast, it went under. Mew claims that members of the group ripped his scuba mask off his face and threw it in the water. But as the footage shows, after approaching and attacking a member of the group, Mew drops the items himself. What is he on? Whoa! 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 So I went out after it and they started. Uh, another group of mostly girls came over from from the other side yelling at me or calling me child molester and what, what, something with uh, yeah, something like that and I, I I went back I went I actually after this incident I didn't even I didn't don't even know what happened I just know that they, they attacked me and I had I was in self-defense. In reality, nearly a minute passed between the moment Mew dropped his items and the girl's approach to his left. And while doing so, members of the group yelled at him to walk away. Walk away! Now, yeah, what the hell? Who is this? Yes! 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 yes. From the, from the culture! From the culture! Who is that? I went into self-defense mode and then I went over to my, my uh, group of people. That was it. And they asked me what happened and I wouldn't tell them. I said, I can't tell you. I let me calm down. Okay. I, was, I was shocked. So nobody on that knew exactly what happened. The only thing they say, said, well, you know, somebody got in an argument over there, like, yep, yeah, let's just, let's just leave that alone, don't, 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 don't go there. And he the was here. He said, they, they take taking my knife. <laughs> That's what he said. And they pointed, he, he was in the, in the floor. So you never saw him with the knife? No. Never. No, did you see anyone with the knife? No. And I said, did you guys find something? And I thought they did. And I, I, I know they did because they were hiding something from me. When, and then I went over there and they grabbed my snowball, they threw it down, they, 
they started, uh, they got up their, their tubes, they came after me, they pushed me, one of them hit me, and then there was a girl that came from here and hit me in the back of my head. And I was about right there. You said right here? And when she hit me, yeah. And that's when the, the female hit you? Yeah. But those goggles are lost. They took them, they grabbed them off my face and threw them in the water. We found the battle. Oh, good. Thank you. Did it seem like these groups were together? After they came after me, I don't know. I, th I Yes. Okay. Yes, I think so. I mean, I feared for my life. Tell you the truth, when they started uh, hitting me and, 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 and pointed a, a knife at me and then another kid pointed a knife, I thought that was it for me. Luckily, I took it from, from the, one of the young kids and I think that's when I saw him back. While the incident began with the encounter between Mui and Isaac Schumann's group, brothers Dent and Tony Carlson, out tubing with their father that day, intervened after seeing the fight break out and were seriously wounded. Despite Mui's claims, both were unarmed. Did you hit him? Like, did, it, did the knife make contact with him? That I don't remember. Okay. You were so close. Sure. And one had it in his hand, so I took his hand and I bent it and I poked him with, with his own hand. And then I, I took it from his hand and then I, I went and swung like this. So I don't know who I hit. I just know, I just know that I took the knife from, from one of the kids. Okay. The other one, I don't know what happened to. I, I didn't get hit. Because as soon as this happened, I started running across. So I went across to, to my group. And then my group was wondering well, what just happened. Was it? And I didn't, I didn't want to tell them anything. Just because he didn't want to... I didn't want to get uh, anybody aroused. I didn't want my group to go say, well, we're going to go talk to those kids. No, they were too drunk, I believe. They were too drunk and too, too set on, on, on uh, going after people, I think. How did... What were these guys doing? Did they, know, did, did they know anything was going on? No. So I, they didn't know you were getting punched or... Well, they saw the scuffle because at one point uh, Ernesto who was, was coming towards me like, hey man, did you find anything, anything? And I said, no, I didn't. I don't know. These guys must have it or something. I don't know. I, and, and he says, okay, well, he will just get another phone by Monday. He, he was concerned about getting the phone. And like, okay, so well, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. I'm just going to go leave this shit in my, 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 my thing. And then Sandy said, okay, are you okay? And said, I don't want to talk about it. You know, and then they asked me, hey, what do you want to do? You want to stay here? You want to go down? And I said, I want to go down. While Mui claims to have kept his group in the dark about the savage incident, Torres Chags appears to have seen more than his troubled friend claims. Because that, that, what I say is, somebody here with blood, somebody here with blood. You just saw a bunch of people with blood? Yeah. All right. So, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. But Mu's next claim is a bold-faced lie that will become a key piece of evidence against him at trial. Did you have a knife? No, you? no, absolutely. Okay. No. I had one earlier that I used to cut, but right at the beginning, and I left it on on the in the. I, I don't even know what I, what I did with it. These are the moments Mu pulls out the knife. As he clutches it by his side, the young man in the blue and pink trunks points to it and yells, he's got a knife. After which Mu is pushed into the water. Upon emerging, his vicious attack commenced. I, I don't even know uh, where it's at, the little truth. Uh, it may be in one of the bags we had with us. It may have been in, in um, I, I don't know. It, maybe I left it, put it back in the car. Do, do you have any cuts or marks on you? Have you had a chance to like look at your no. torso or? Uh, uh, somebody was telling me that I'm bleeding from my ear, from my left ear. Who told you that? Oh, I think it was Amy. They said, make your bleeding from your left ear. I went like this, I went in the water, I cleaned, and then, but I don't see any blood. You know, and I, I really, I don't know if you see any cuts, but I, I, I don't. don't. Yeah, um, so I don't know where the, why I was bleeding from my ear. Did, did Ernesto come and get you? No. Like, did anybody know that you were getting no. punched or? No. No. Was anybody? They wanted to talk. 
to talk to me about the phone if I found the phone and what did those guys say and I said they probably did they don't want to give it up they're, they're, they they uh, they attack me and that's it and then I said let's go I don't want to be here so people were punching him where were they punching him it was uh, like a right here outside by, by the rock yep by the rock they punched yep where were they Put punching the where where were they punching him on his body? He punching, I don't know, in the face or here, they punch him down. And when he get out, that's when I tell him, get out there, because I don't know. So they don't know what happened here? You didn't tell anybody? No. Okay. No. You're the first one to know. Okay. That's why probably Amy and everybody else is so surprised. Well, they're worried about you. Yeah. I mean, and, they, and even Ernesto was like, I don't know how the hell this happened. He, he, they don't know anything because I didn't, I didn't know what to tell, tell them. Yeah. I really don't know. Everything happened so fast. I, I really don't remember why they attacked me. I don't know why they took my snor snorkel away. I don't know why one of them wanted to pull, pull my pants down. I don't know why they were being so mean. I just don't know. Yeah. I just don't know. And why did they uh, want to scare me with, with a knife? I just don't know why they're, they're scaring people on the river. I mean, it's a family-oriented river with, with knives and, 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 you know, what they did. So were the two males that had knives? I saw two, two males, okay. yes. Yeah. And were they both from this group, or do you even, no, do you even know? Well, that I don't know. Okay. One of them was from this group. The okay. one that I took the smaller knife from, I think, was from this group. Okay, so you took the smaller knife from one of them. Mui again claims he was attacked by two men with knives and after taking one from them, fought for his life. But he makes no mention of the young woman he stabbed in the process. And he pretty much like, not like lunged at me, but kind of just like leaned forward a little bit. And I thought he had punched me in the stomach. Uh, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Like I was telling my friends, I was like, I think he, he punched me really hard. Like this feels weird. And we both had looked down, and I instantly was bleeding. No, oh, I, I was, I was, I was going like this. I wanted, I wanted out. They were coming, and they were punching me, and they, they were uh, circling me, and they came really close. They were pushing me in the water, and I just grabbed the kid's knife. I didn't even know if I was holding it right. I just grabbed it from him because he tried to poke me with it. So I feared for my life. Like I was very shocked. I was extremely shocked. I couldn't even say anything to anybody. I had locked jaw. I don't know. Right now, I don't even know how this happened, how I got away from all that. So when they were pushing you in the water, did you go underwater? Or were you, I, you I remain tripped. standing? No, I tripped. Okay. I tripped and went, I fell in the water a couple of times, yes. Um, where on your body did they hit you? In the back of my, my, my back. And I know one of the girls came over and slapped me right over my right ear. I couldn't even see what they were doing because I was, I was tripping, tripping over the stones and I was falling down and they were just jumping on me. I was fearing for my life. I'm still fearful that they're going to find out who I am and go do something to, to, to Sandy and possibly some of these people over here. I fear that somehow they're gonna find out who I am and continue their whatever that was. And I don't know why they're so hateful. And I, I just don't get it. I mean, this is the second time I come to the river, the first time for my wife, and I promised her it was gonna be a beautiful outing and nothing to fear. We had a lot of booze. She didn't drink because she was the designated driver. But most of us didn't. There was another girl that didn't drink on the other party because they wanted to drive home. We ate well, we had music, everything was so good, so good, so good. Of course, I had a lot of alcohol, who doesn't, you know, we're... Well, you had a sober ride. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't smell it on you. Were you yeah. drinking beer or vodka yeah. or what? No, no, no. Okay. We don't do uh, hard liquor because then we dehydrate too fast and yep. we get friends. Okay. So after my quadruple bypass, I still have cramps. Oh, yikes. Quadruple bypass? How long yeah. ago was that? A year and a half ago. Wow. Yeah, so if you see any wires in my chest, in my sternum, that's from the wire. Really? Do you have a pacemaker in there too or anything? No. no? Mm -mm. 
I, I tell you the truth, I'm, I'm scared because I'm not in the best of health, okay? Yeah. I'm just going down the river, probably should not have even drank that, that much beer, but the doctor never said don't drink. Sure. You know, especially beer you can have as much as you want in moderation. I was in cold water, yeah. you know, so, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then missing vein here and then from my leg. Is that what they used to? Yeah, cut, take, take it here, take it from here, cut it in half, that's two. The same thing from my uh, mm -hmm. leg, cut it in half, use the other two. So it's quadruple bypass. Wow. Yeah, I was dead. This, my heart stopped five hours. Wow. Despite Mui's alleged poor health, he was more than fit enough to critically wound four people just hours ago and kill a teenage boy three times younger than him. Is this you? Yes. Okay. Who... What do you think was happening at that time? They were, they were fighting me. They, they pointed the knife at me. They pointed the knife at me. Both boys pointed the knife at me. Okay. Did you see anyone take this picture of you? No, God, no. I was, I was actually very, very uh, um, scared. Yeah. I was very scared. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what they were doing and why. I mean, I understand they were drunk, but you get drunk, I get drunk, we all get drunk. We don't do that kind of stuff, especially on a family river, a river like this, family outing. We don't do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was very, you see, I was very, very scared. I didn't know what was going to happen next. Did you see the woman that hit you in the ear? Did you see mm -hmm. her at all? No. I turned around, she hit me again. Okay. Do you remember what her bathing suit looked like? Mm, no. She was wearing? She, she was just yelling at me and calling me a uh, 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 child molester. That's how it all started. They kept calling me a child molester. I don't know, out of the blue. And then they wanted to beat me up because they said I'm a child molester. And then my argument back was to them was, if I'm a child molester and you're children, you shouldn't be drinking. You should not be out here drinking, okay? And doing what you're doing. Where are your pants? So you said that they were standing really close to you? They were on I top of me. They okay. were pushing me, shoving me. I tripped, I fell down, I got up, and I, that's where I saw the, the, one of the kids there. It was the closest kid with a, with a, with a knife. And I grabbed it from him. And that was the, the smallest? Yes, thing. yes. And he was in front of you. Was he, was he as close as we are? Or oh, he, he was closer. closer. He was okay. closer. He was closer. But as soon as he came with the knife, I grabbed the knife from him. And what I did then, I mean, I shouldn't show you, but I, I grabbed, twisted his, his uh, uh, arm and poked him with, with, his, with his own uh, knife. Then, okay. then I took it from him and I started swinging. Okay. So I swung. I don't even know who I hit. Okay. I don't know if, if, if I hit the girl that hit me twice in the head from behind. I don't know if I hit another kid. I don't know. They were just on top of me. They, were, they, were, they chased me, hitting me, and yelling at me, and, and calling me, insulting me. That's it. Me now claims that he was chased as well as assaulted, but the video clearly shows that it was he who approached the group and returned to continue the confrontation. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I mean, if you, you sound like you were really afraid. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have, I have a quadruple bypass. I have been out of shape. I have been in bed for, for God, for a long time, for six months at least. I couldn't go to work. I'm not in the best, I mean, I was just floating down the river. Nothing much. Every once in a while I got up so I could pee because I can't pee in the, in the, in the tent there, you know. I shouldn't tell you that on camera, but yes, most people have to get up the, the thing. So I got out, I would get up and then hold on and then get back in. I mean, I, do, I don't do anything to, to, to stay in shape. I just, I'm a guy that wants to survive and work, keep working at reach engineering, you know, and why these things happen, I, it's beyond me. I mean, I, 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 I don't understand. I mean, why would they, that many people, come down on one person that didn't absolutely do anything, take his goggles, almost one wanted to put my pants down. But why? All of a sudden they were like, whoops, around.
around me, and they were, they were attacking me from all their directions. And I, I truly, truly feared for my life. Wei now claims that he and his group stayed for a time after the incident and even watched authorities arrive. But he has no explanation for not approaching them to explain what happened or why he instead continued with his day of tubing on the river. So when you go back to your tube, do you guys get the hell out of there? Or no. do you like, what do you do? We stayed there. Okay. Yeah, the girls called the cops. We didn't know what to do. Um, and we stayed there for a long time. There were people coming. We even saw the, the sheriff coming. And I, I, they kept saying, oh my God, they didn't know what happened. So they said, oh my God, what happened? So there was a fight, there was a fight. And I said, yeah, I don't know what was going on after that. I thought they were still fighting. I Personally, when I came back, I saw a whole bunch of people coming over there and yelling at each other. And I thought they were still fighting for some reason. I didn't know what was going on. So I personally wanted to stay and watch to see if the cops get them for, for fighting. You know, for whatever they're oh, doing. Sure. Okay. So I wanted to be a witness to them fighting. Gotcha. Or if the the cops needed a witness, I wanted to sit there for as long as possible. And then the group said, "Well, there's so many people. There, I don't know. Let's just get going. We don't want to get involved in this." And I was just in there. They attacked me. Yeah, but look at them now. They're attacking each other. I don't know what they're doing. So cops came and. We stayed there for, I don't know, another 10, 15 minutes. With when the police were there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then we decided, we'll go. Nobody asked me anything, and I said, I gave my mouth shot, I, and down the river we went. Okay. So, I was very shocked. Despite the chaotic scene we describes, his wife claimed he was completely mute on the details. Well, Sandy said that you were quiet. I was very quiet. And you didn't really talk. I didn't want, to, I didn't know what to say. Yeah. I mean, I get my, excuse my French, my ass kicked by a whole bunch of kids. What am I going to say? I just got my ass kicked by this kid. Now the police is on top of them. Well, I think something is going to come out of it. Yeah. So I thought the police was there because they were fighting, you know, I, because these were just boys. And they were being obnoxious, not, not only picking on me. Then these girls came over and hit me. I asked them if they found something, and they said, well, you know, they started calling me a, a molester. Then I got up and one of them took my, my goggles, threw me in the river. I went after them. One of them wanted to pull my pants down. And there you go. It's clear that Moody is sticking with his story of self-defense, yet he allegedly still doesn't know just how deadly his actions were. But when he finds out, his first instinct is to blame the victim. So what happened? Can you tell me what happened? Yeah. Um, four people went to the hospital with injuries. Oh my God. And uh, one person died. Oh no. I don't know any of their names and I don't know any genders, so I, I don't Was know. Was that because they fought each other or is that the... I don't know. I don't know what their injuries are. I, I just, I was with Sandy the whole mm -hmm. time. And then when I kind of turned Sandy over to Ernesto and Amy, then I came here. So um, I, I, I have no idea what their injuries were. Oh my, um, God. oh my God. Oh my God. So we just need to be able to like piece this together, you know, in your statement. What other pictures did they give you of me? Just that one. That's the only one I have. They didn't take, they, well, they had lots of cameras. You should take their yep, cameras. Yes. And so I have colleagues, yeah. investigators that are, that are talking to all of those, you know, the, the people in the group and the other witnesses. So yes. While Mia acts surprised to hear that Isaac Schumann has died, police told him exactly why he was being arrested before even leaving the river. So right now you're being placed under arrest, okay? Uh, you're being placed under arrest for a homicide and attempted homicide. Despite Moo's commitment to his defense, he's well aware that his life is now over. Now my whole life is down the tubes. Well, I don't, I don't know if that's the case. Because people have the right to defend themselves. 
I know, but this is, oh, this is Wisconsin. This is Wisconsin. Okay. You can continue on. I, okay. I, I, I usually know that people that, that defend themselves, they end up being accused of being this and being that. Well, I think if you'd asked me what I would have done, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. I don't know. I, don't I would have been scared shitless, I can tell you that. When, when that many people yeah. Yeah, tried to pull your pants down and hit you and, yeah, and two, two, two boys had knives on them, they didn't find any of those two knives? I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But we're looking. And, you know, we're looking before it gets dark out. Um, okay, right now I'm glad I actually took that kid's knife. He would have stabbed me. He was not there to scare me. He was there to harm me. At least I'm, I'm here. But I'm sorry for what, what, it, how it ended up. I just can't believe what happened. They need to maybe do sobriety tests on minors on that river. Maybe they need to put an end to drinking, uh, uh, underage drinking and doing drugs. The, the, that the river over there is, is turned into a sewer. My second time, and I have dragged my wife out of there pretty much against her will. I promised her it was going to be the best day. I made promises, promises. We're going to have a great time with this. Because she didn't want to go. No. She always says, oh, places like this, all they do is uh, smoke pot and do this. Yes, there is a lot of uh, pot smoking over there. We don't know who is legal, who is illegal. I don't know anything about Wisconsin laws, but you can smell it. It was everywhere in the air. Yeah. And I don't know what people do, because you do the DNA, you can find out, you know, what type of drugs are in my system. I've never done any of that stuff, so I don't know. I'm very clean, and it's as clean as they go. You looked at my criminal record. You can keep digging. There is nothing there because I don't have anything, not even a parking ticket, not a speeding ticket. You know, I'm as a law-abiding citizen as they come. But I fear for my life, too. I mean, I went through a, a, a very serious oh, surgery to be alive to be uh, 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 knifed down by a bunch of kids on the river? Yeah, I, I understand. And I'm not blaming the police. It's, it's a, I believe that's a private land. They have to have their own security there, yeah. and they need to do better. Police soon received cell phone video showing the incident, and within 48 hours, Nicola Mew is charged with first-degree intentional homicide and four counts of attempted first-degree intentional homicide. With their lives forever changed, the victims now face a long road to recovery from their gruesome injuries. So I actually have about 30 staples going from my belly button up my stomach, um, where they had to go in to fix my diaphragm and then they had to put in a chest tube. During the trial, heartbreaking witness testimony details the horrific day and the permanent, endless trauma its cause. Uh, were you able to see that he had a significant wound? Yes, I was. Um, what kind of, where was his wound? He was on his chest. Oh, uh, what did you do to assist Isaac? I tried my hardest to stop the bleeding. Wasn't able to completely move and um, that's when I decided uh, I needed to hold pressure onto the wound <laughs> and try. <laughs> And, and drag him to the shore. Did you do that? I did. Are you comfortable showing the jury? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Um, at the end, when you were saying that's not funny, who were you referring to? Uh, Isaac Schumann. Is that a nickname? Yeah. Anyway, it's been marked as Exhibit 68. Um, is that an off-duty nurse who was tubing with friends described how she tried to assist in life-saving measures. He was not breathing, so I started chest compressions uh, right away and continued that for 
a long time. And a doctor who treated the wounded testified to the brutal nature of the injuries. Uh, the stomach had a, a full hole in it. So when EJ arrived, he had a very large incision, essentially, uh, almost from his sternum down to his the middle of his pelvis or his pubis. But combative cross-examination by Mew's defense led to several tense moments. You agree that even though you're not, as you say, you're not a fighter, you pushed a man from behind while your friend was smacking him in the front. Agreed? I would have... Hold on, hold on. Sustain. We, we've been through this before. Many times, please. You have an accident. Please. I am speaking. I'm sorry. Thank please you. move to a new topic. I apologize, Judge. I... Despite Mew's continued insistence that he was merely defending himself, overwhelming testimony refutes him. Did you hear Isaac Schumann um, threaten Mr. Mew in any fashion? No. Yet as Mew takes the stand in his own defense, he paints a very different portrait of the day's events and his central role in them. At the time you were called a raper, what was your anger scale at? Maybe one. One out of ten? Yeah. And that was enough to get you to run up on these boys, grab onto them, stop their tubes at a one. Is that what you're saying? Objection, argument. Objection. You see your knife? Yes. And how close it is to his jaw, his chin? Yes. That's because when you stabbed him, instead of pulling out, you went up, right? I was falling backwards with the knife in my arm, in my hand, and the angle of my arm was about the same. You had said that your fear level was rising. Mm -hmm. You had waved to your friends, right? That was the look on your face at the time, correct? Mm -hmm. You're smiling. I'm confused. You're smiling. I'm confused. You're not smiling? It's not a smile. Mew appears determined to feign confusion as to what really happened that fateful day, but for the jury, it proves no mystery at all. The verdicts read as follows. As to count one of the information, Isaac Schumann, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree reckless homicide as submitted. As to count two of the information, Alexander Martin, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety. As to count three of the information, Dante Carlson, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety. As to count four of the information, Anthony Carlson, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety. As to count five of the information, Riley Madison, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count six of the information, Madison Cohen, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of battery as charged. In April 2024, Nikolai Mew was found guilty of first degree reckless homicide in the death of 17 year old Isaac Schumann, and he was also convicted of battery and recklessly endangering safety with an aggravated factor of the use of a dangerous weapon in connection with the wounded victims. He'll be held in a Wisconsin prison for 20 years.